Hey, good morning everyone, it's Jamie. I am in the field today and I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk to you guys about rock art and preservation. I've mentioned it um, in several of my videos and in some of my blog posts, you know, the proper way to treat a rock art site when you get to it. Um, but in case you don't, here's just a little refresher. Rock art is meant to be viewed with your eyes and nothing else. So when you see it, um, look, take as many pictures as you want. Uh, we, as archaeologists, recommend that you do not touch the rock art. The oils from your fingers can degrade the panel, whether it's paint or, you know, you can aid in the, um, the weathering process. And you never want to put your name, carve your initials or anything in it. Um, you never want to shoot at it. You never want to, like, actually try to cut it out from the rock. I mean, it was put here for a reason and people like to come enjoy it. So leave it the way you found it and let other people enjoy it the same way you have. All right, so here is a rock art panel. Difference between different types of rock art, there are pictographs and petroglyphs. Pictographs are painted, so since this is not painted, it is a petroglyph. Um, you can see several figures, people figures, um, horse-like figures, and this is a great panel. I was just talking to you about vandalism, and if you can see up top, all those little holes are bullet holes. So someone has come out here with a gun and shot at this panel. Um, a little bit to the side in really faint uh, markings, you can see letters of someone where someone's tried to carve their name here. This is, um, this isn't, it, it's bad, it's considered vandalism, but it's not directly on top of the figures and it's not all that bright. So, I mean, as far as vandalism goes, this isn't the worst I've seen, but it still is just disrespectful. I mean, you're not gonna walk into the Louvre and, you know, write, you know, Tommy Jr. was here next to the Mona Lisa. I mean, this isn't in a museum, but it's just as special. So anyway, what I want to do is I want to take you over to this panel. So you're wondering why I'm out here. This site has already been recorded. What's happening now is I'm in an area where a lot of oil and gas production happens. So they're drilling, it's for new energy, it's creating new jobs, it's exciting. But what also happens is that there's a road right here and every single truck that drives up and down this road, in fact, there's one coming in the distance, uh, I'm here to make sure that they don't kick up too much dust. So why does dust matter? Um, think of dust, well, like sandpaper, when you're using sandpaper on something, the more kind of the sand and the grit and the repetitive motion, the more you're gonna wear down or erase something. The same concept applies here uh, with, with the rock art. The mower dust that gets kicked up, um, it lands, it travels through the air and it lands on top of the panels and it acts like sandpaper, really slow moving sandpaper, but over time it can wear, wear down the panels, erode them, um, and it's just not good. So I'm here to make sure that uh, everyone goes slow and uh, is aware of the rock art and we can protect it. Pretty exciting. I bet you guys didn't know that that was a job for somebody, but it is. <laughs> okay, so this rock art panel is pretty fantastic in that it has several different uh, cultural elements on it. So what I mean is, let's see, for example, you can see right away that there's that really brightly pecked um, deer-like figure, but what you uh, don't see unless you look really clearly, don't mind my coffee cup, is right here there is a very faint um, anthropomorph. Anthropomorph is an archaeological term for um, like a human type figure. They usually have trapezoidal bodies really really wide at the shoulders um, and down. But it's so faintly pegged which tells us that it was created a lot long, let's see, it's much older than the one that's on top of it. How about we say that? So we know that we've got something that's really old. So like the natural patina of the rock has had time to kind of repatinate over the figure and that one right above it is newer because the the natural surface of the rock is still much more bright. This panel is fantastic. So not only do we have the really old stuff, um, so the older really faint things are what we're going to call archaic, which is anywhere from about 6,000 to about 2,000 years ago. Um, then we have Fremont style elements that are in here. You're going to see a lot of like the wavy lines or the dot matrices. Those are all what we would attribute to the Fremont who were around anytime from about 1700 years ago 
to about 700 years ago. Right at the end of the Fremont time, we get the Numix speakers who've come up from Southern California and their modern descendants would be the Ute, Paiute, Shoshone, um, and we can tell that there are Numic elements. Um, and since I'm near the Ute reservation, I'm gonna go with these are Ute elements. Um, that guy on a horse. You know, the Fremont never, or at least to our knowledge, did not use horse technology. So the fact that we see guys on horses, we know that this is Ute. So it's really neat to see um, all these different cultural styles superimposed here. This means this was an important area, um, enough for people to come back and, uh, and put their drawings here. Pretty groovy, huh? So there's this misconception out there that archeologists want to keep archeological sites to themselves and they don't want the public to visit them and it's kind of this closed-minded, secretive community. Um, in general, most archaeologists like the public to come visit. They like people to get excited about the cultural heritage that's in their backyard and to take an interest in it because the more you're interested in something, the more likely that you are to protect it um, and not vandalize it. So here's a couple tips um, if you are going to go out and visit a rock art site. Um, go visit it. Go check it out. We ask, um, as archaeologists, I'm saying a collective we, but uh, don't share don't share the GPS location of where it's at. Tell people word of mouth, but it's generally not um, not a good idea to put the coordinates up on the internet or anything. Um, take pictures, like I said, don't touch it, and uh, yeah. Protecting and preserving archaeological sites can't be done just by archaeologists, and it can't be done by government officials. It has to be done um, by everybody. So, you know, if you're out here and you see something that looks like vandalism, if you see someone actively spray painting, um, you don't have to, you know, vigilante run out and get them, but uh, take some ownership on it. Call in a land manager, take down their license plate number. Um, it's This is all of our cultural heritage past and there's not prehistoric people around anymore to make this stuff. So the longer we can protect and preserve it and enjoy it, uh, the longer it'll be around for future generations. So now you've learned a little about some rock art. Hope you guys have a glorious day. Hopefully your office is as nice as mine today. Cheers. Bye.